Hello, my name is Opal Singleton. I am the president and CEO of Million Kids. Please follow us on Facebook and Instagram and all of our social media. This is a Million Kids Insider Alert. It's our way of being able to train the public when new cases come out. And this is a case that was just announced. And I thought it was perfect for educating about sextortion, especially sextortion of minors. So this happens to be a case of a repeat offender. And I think that's worth mentioning. In this case, the perpetrator is in Virginia, but the victim, a 15-year-old female, lives in California up by the Bay Area. The perpetrator, the alleged perpetrator, although he has now pled guilty, his name is Chad Michael Lehofer. This is his arrest uh, photo from back in 2006 from Connecticut. He now lives in Virginia. So this is a case of a re repeat sex offender and also someone who preyed on uh, exploitation of minors, especially online. So this case began in December 11th of 2018 and was uh, brought to fruition about April 8th, 2019. So it went on for what, about three to four months there. Uh, he is in Virginia. The, the victim is clear across the nation in California. I've written a book called Societal Shift, A World Without Borders and a Home Without Walls. What you will see is the perpetrator is no longer just down the street, maybe halfway across the country or in a completely different country. And that is the case. In this case, they're on the other edge of uh, the United States. So as this was reported, and I want to bring out the reporter in this case, Keith Epps, a freelance star uh, publication, and I, I appreciate and value solid reporting. So in this case, the court records listed addresses for the perpetrator out of, uh, out of Virginia. And as they're looking into this, uh, they're finding that he has what appears to be multiple victims, but we're going to focus on the victim from San Francisco. He has pled guilty, so his sentence could range from anywhere from 15 years up to 50 years. Well, according to the federal court records, she, the juvenile, sent about 100 pictures and about 50 videos in that four-month period, and the girl is only 15. Now, this gets really brutal, and that's why I wanted to be able to share it with you, because I want especially parents and teachers and counselors and pastors uh, as well as teenagers to understand once you start down this path, these can get really, really scary. And that's what happened here. He, he wanted her to send photos. He did. Then he, in return, sent his photos back and forth. However, when she tried to break off contact with him, he pretended to be a different person. This happens so often. Mom and dad listen to this. You, you block that person, you think you're through with that person, and then they will come in with that photo under a completely different name and completely different so, social media identities. So that's what happened here. He pretended to be a different person. He threatened her with exposure to really just, uh, you know, make it so that she could not go forward with her life if she did not continue to send that explicit material. Part of the harassment, he included her real name in a social media handle or a post to demonstrate his intention of exposing her previously sent explicit images to friends and family and everywhere that he could. He also threatened to expose the images to others, including this victim's mother and her friends. He sent the victim uh, the contact information for her mother's place a business, okay? And he said, I'm going to start sending this stuff and I'll be calling your mom later. So somehow he has been able to get a photo or some information about the mother. And in fact, later you'll see that he has a screenshot from her phone. He claimed to be watching the minor's house and would send messages indicating that he knew where she lived and that he would be waiting at her home. How terrifying is that for a 15-year-old and her family, quite frankly? In response to the threat, she finally capitulated and sent more sexually explicit videos to him. 
Well, once law enforcement was able to obtain a search warrant of his cell phone, they discovered they had a lot of images in there, a lot of images related to her, but other people also. So they got a warrant for his internet phone app and they used it to discover that the account was using an IP address. That's how they determined who he was and how to track him down. When they went in a search of the home, he's living with his parents. His IP address is tracked back to his mother's home. And when they went in and did a search of that, they found the Keep Safe app. I'm gonna show you that in a minute. That's known as a calculator app. That's one of those apps that's used to hide all other apps. I'm gonna show it to you mom and dad because that's a common thing for young people is that if you ever see the calculator app on your child's phone, ask for the password and don't give the phone back until they're ready to give it because they're hiding other apps. Well, that's what this man was doing. Once they uh, got the password and opened up the calculator app, they found hundreds of sexually explicit images and videos. That is very common for pedophiles. They love to build large libraries. And one of the reasons they're sextorting these young victims is to get that photo and, and they keep them and they share them with other perpetrators. In this case, we can't prove that he did, but it's, there's a strong indication that might have happened. The vault also contained a screenshot of the victim's mother contact information, which had been used to blackmail this victim. So mom and dad, this is what a calculator app looks like. If you see that on the front of your child's phone, ask for that password that's used to hide other apps. Well, this is not his first go round in this case. The victim's case finally came to the attention of Homeland Security. All the articles indicate that the girl cooperated with law enforcement. She must have been terrified out of her mind. And so the only way to end this is for you to uh, report it and get involved because there will be other victims. It comes out that he was previously uh, sentenced in the past and served time for involving sexual abuse of two other minors. So here is his arrest photo from 2006. Looks like he's moved from Connecticut down to Virginia when this is taking place. So I want to give you some takeaways from this because that's what these insider alerts are all about is education and continuing your education. Many sex offenders will reoffend, and I cannot stress that enough. We must vote for judges, for district attorneys, for sheriffs, for prosecutors that are committed to being hard on crime. People who will fight for strong initial sentencing and will not allow current convicted sex offenders out early. We have to vote for legislators that propose and support laws that protect our children and our communities. We have to educate our young people and parents, folks, that's what this is about, about signs to watch for if you're talking to a pedophile. I'm gonna give you those in just a minute. We have to educate parents and teenagers about the importance of reporting any case online that involves sexual exploitation. And we would like to suggest that you have your entire family look at our new movie that's been produced by Aurora's Media called Sextortion, The Hidden Pandemic. Watch that film together and discuss it with your whole family. Show it at your church with your youth group and your adults, your parent classes. I'm going to give you how to do that in a minute. So how do we teach our kids to watch out? Because every kid I know thinks they're not going to be, this won't happen to them. They'll be too smart. Well, the first thing you know, if you're talking to a bad guy, a predator, is they will ask you to move to a different app. If you're on TikTok, they'll send you to Instagram. Snapchat, maybe they'll take you over to TikTok. They will take you to different apps. They're trying to verify you're not a cop. And they're also trying to verify that you're going to be available and vulnerable to be groomed into exploitation. They will do all the question asking and you will do all the answering, meaning they know more about you than you know about them. Almost always they'll say, this is our little secret, do not tell. 
share with your children and, and your adult teenagers, okay, who are not children, but they are easily susceptible to sextortion. Share with them that if anyone says, don't tell, that's a huge red flag, okay? Go and tell everyone you know. If they send you a vote, a photo or a video, or they want to live stream, all of those, you don't know who this person is. So do not be communicating with them any more than if than the initial encounter that will tell you. If they start sending photos, they're going to want photos back. They offer to solve all your problems or take care of you. You know, I'm, I'm sorry you and your folks are fighting, but, you know, you look like a great kid to me and I'll take care of you. Uh, I'm sorry your dad isn't there for you, but I will be there for you. They want to meet up. Watch out. Have that conversation before you ever, ever give your child a phone. If you, they want to start, someone wants to meet up with them, then you need to share with them right there. 58% of kids who are being blackmailed will go out and meet a pedophile to negotiate that back and they get raped, they get assaulted. And that's what this man was trying to do here. Even though he lived halfway across the, or full, the full way across the country, don't let that throw you off. I, you know, if you follow me and kids for long, you will see that you, you see these scenarios where perpetrators come in, the kid sneaks out in the middle of the night and poof, they're gone and they want money. If you share with your kids right now, if you get them one of these things where they want money, come and talk immediately. They're probably connected to a foreign uh, telemarketing center that is out there to extort your children. If your child is a victim, mom and dad, or parent or teacher or, or pastor, if you have a victim of sextortion, here's what you do. Here's what you first don't do. Do not delete the photos. Screenshot them just in case so they don't get lost. They're evidence. Do not show those photos to other people other than your immediate spouse and law enforcement. Do not show them to the whole family because this is very traumatic for your child. Some children end up taking their life rather than to deal with the stress of this. So be very, very sensitive to that. Do not go on and tell that pedophile that you're going to go to the cops. Do not alert them that you even know what's going on. And then take your child and the phone and go to your local cyber crimes unit. Here in Riverside County, we have an excellent ICAC unit, Internet Crimes Against Children, that's operated through the district attorney's office. But wherever you are, take your child and the phone. I don't care if your child's 18 years old and six feet tall. If they're in this situation, go to law enforcement. Not only will this never end until it's reported and they can investigate, but you might be able to save hundreds of other kids because they never have one victim. Then everybody get counseling, okay? Separate counseling for the person that's being uh, sextorted, separate counseling for the parents or grandparents, whoever's involved. And then if there's younger children, they need counseling too, especially if live streaming has been involved. So much of live streaming and video games and, and this kind of thing takes place. And what they don't realize is that what a family doesn't realize is it shows your other children on a live stream if they're in the room. Well, here's our movie. It has been released. It is $9.99. It is on Amazon Prime and on Vimeo and uh, iTunes and Apple TV and several others. Uh, if you want to learn a little more about it, you can either get it at millionkids.org and link over or at sextortionfilm.com. I hope you will order that movie and the whole family watch it and then share it with your, your uh, sorority, your seroptimist, your, your rotary, and also your parents' group at churches. This is how you report, and you can report anonymously, whether it's human trafficking, whether it's social media exploitation, 1-888-373788. Well, this has been a million kids insider alert. I hope it's been helpful. Please share them with everyone you know, and we will see you next time. If you want to support our work, you can do that by going to meandkids.org slash donate. 
We so much appreciate you. We need your funding to be able to provide these kinds of services out there and to do this kind of education. Millionkids.org slash donate. Thank you very much for following this Insider Alert. We'll see you next time. We have a new case we want to use to educate you. Thanks for listening.